morning, everybody. I'm Gabby here. I'm the GM of Career Agility International. So on my left is actually Adrian Chu. So Adrian is our, our founder. He's also the only career strategist in Singapore. He was the one that brought me in Zane a lot because we believe in this crazy vision of his that people around Singapore, around the world need to learn about a career strategy. So Adrian's the one, the vision and, and the wisdom. And then Zane on my right, the woman that supposedly is in the in the prison while she's not. Okay, Zane, please do <laughs> Zian is actually our head coach. Zian is a no nonsense coach. We call her the yin, the yang. In Asia and her like the yin and yang. So they're actually both amazing career coaches. They were my career coaches, and I convinced them to do this um this uh, webinar because I think all of us need help at this particular moment. So if any questions, um please unmute yourself. But if you are very shy, if there are too many people, please drop your questions into the chat box. You can see right at the bottom, depending where you are using a mobile phone or a laptop. Okay, so over to you, Adrian and Zian. Okay, I'll start first. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Even though it's virtual, I'm so happy to see familiar names, familiar faces, and uh, it's a good start to the morning. We decided to make this session at 8 a.m. because uh, in, in usual times, we would uh, not, we will face a lot of resistance. What, 8 o'clock webinar? You know, but, but today with uh, stay home uh, and everything, it's, it's going to be quite easy. So uh, kind of before everything, the day starts. This topic we're going to talk about today, uh, it's, it's about job hunting in a, in a, a shitty market. Okay? So we are, we are going to use some rather uh, naughty language here today. Uh, it's, it's, uh, everyone's running scared. And there are a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty, and a lot of uh, people out there who are wondering what's next. And we, interestingly, we get a lot of the very similar type questions. And interestingly, we get a lot of uh, 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 questions surrounding around job security and, and alternatives. So we decided instead of answering everyone individually, we decided to put together uh, and ask me anything. So for today's presentation, we want to, we want to keep presentation part brief. But we also want you to ask questions because as the, as the spirit of this goes, it's, it's an ask me anything, ask us anything. So a quick introduction uh, of uh, Yen and myself. Uh, Yen, Yen has a uh, very, uh, in fact, uh, she's Singapore's uh, best career coach, okay? Top career coach, I would say. Uh, as, as I shared with her and our team yesterday, I, I mentioned that she was one of Singapore's top career coaches and, and she, and I stand corrected, she is the, one of the best. Uh, not one of the best, but she's the best, okay? Uh, reason why she has uh, over 14, uh, in fact, if you look at it, about 20 years of experience uh, in coaching and headhunting. And she's very strong in the tactical bits. So if you have questions on interview skills, if you want to have questions on uh, CVs, on, on all the other important elements to it, okay, she's the right person to ask and we're always available. Uh, a bit more about myself. Well, I, I as you know, my, my name is Adrian, and uh, I have uh, I, I'm currently now even on uh, ninety one point three FM every Thursday morning with uh, Glenn and the Flying Dutchman, where we have a, a regular segment. But if you're on LinkedIn, you would also realize that I'm I, I'm there as well. I'm quite vocal. Uh, in recent times, I've been a bit quiet on LinkedIn uh, because I think LinkedIn is a bit too noisy right now. So my strategy is to lay back a little bit and spend time and focus on our existing clients and take care of them in this in this uh, particular period of time. But uh, well, so so we've we've written books, uh, we've uh, run seminars, and we we specialize in career strategy. And career strategy, for those of you who are unfamiliar with us, career strategy is. It's about making a plan about two, two to three jobs down the road uh, with the objective of achieving career sustainability okay, and, and happiness. So, uh, is job hunting in a shitty market? As as anything series. Uh, yeah, so, so what we do is we help people with, uh, with their career uh, success. Okay? And the whole idea is we, we help them to achieve career clarity. And what is career clarity? It's understanding what you want to do next and next, next even. We have a team there. Uh, we've, we've run through uh, very quickly what we work, who we are, what we've done. Uh, we've appeared a lot on uh, the media and we have a lot of, uh, we have, we have a lot of exposure in recent, in recent months as well. But um, let's, let's start a bit more about why did we organize these Ask Me Anything uh, sessions, okay? Uh, the, the reason why we're doing this is because uh, we want to offer a public service. Uh, I, know, I know our consulting services are, 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 are there for our paying clients, but uh, there are bigger issues at stake. And, and one of the bigger issues at stake now is that we want to educate the public uh, about, about jobs. 
and about their careers. And especially during this period of time, uh, we, we want to be able to assure you that things aren't as bad as they seem. <clears throat> and we want to assure you that there are always strategies working around uh, issues, like, uh, issues uh, that, that everyone else is facing today. So uh, that's one of, reasons, one of the key reasons why we're doing it. And one of the biggest caveat we want to introduce to you for today is that you know, even though we say job hunting in a, sh in a shitty market, uh, the biggest caveat is there's no easy solution. Okay? The market is tough. The market is bad. There are pockets of growth. But overall, uh, there's no magic pill. There's no magic bullet that's going to get you a job in the, next three, in the next three weeks or the next three months. And we want to share with you a little bit more. Okay? So... Uh, we want to jump in. Uh, so the outline of today's talk, we're going to talk about the market outlook. We're going to talk about how the market has changed, the job market has changed over the past three months and it's changed a lot tremendously. And then we're going to talk about how you can do, what you can do to handle uh, the changes. And uh, of course, we're going to offer you three strategies that you can do, very quick fix strategies that you can look at and practice and, and the philosophy behind it. And we want to also conclude with uh, some very uh, real-world advice as well. So, uh, without further ado, let's let's have uh, Yen. You want to share about uh, the outlook? So the market is not looking good. I think it's uh, it's something everyone understands and they know it anyway. Um, funnily enough, because uh, C nineteen, as we like to call it, has um, overshadowed everything else. I think all of us forgot that things were already going downhill before COVID. So the, those, those fundamental um, issues facing the economy, the global economy, are still there. Um, things were bad already before that with Brexit issues. Um, I think the disintegration of the, Euro, of the, of the Euro bloc, um, massive trade war with China. Um, and so the, the US is fighting China vigorously and it's causing a splintering in terms of all our supply chains and all of the, um, the prices. Um, the world economy is, is, as we like to talk about it, was already in the decline and potentially on life support. And then, of course, our dear virus came along and uh, I think it's, it's almost going to pull the plug on a lot of people and uh, we're, we're seeing some massively scary numbers um, on, on potential outlooks. So when it first hit, there was some glimmer of hope, right, that there was going to be a vaccine very soon and my DBS relationship manager called us and said, hey, you know, we're expecting a V-shaped recovery. Um, no. <laughs> uh, I, and again, that's the other thing. We, everyone can say whatever they want and then if they were correct, they'll in hindsight say, yeah, yeah, we were right. Uh, but I'm expecting something more L-shaped and it's going to be protracted. It's going to be long term and organizations have to fix not just their BCP today, which is urgent, but also um, um, the fundamentals that were originally present pre-COVID, right? So, so I, I'm thinking it's going to be L-shaped, but you know, the optimist, uh, some of us optimistic types are saying maybe it's going to be U-shaped, but it's going to be uh, a very... Yeah, do you want to explain what L-shape is? Um, L-shaped recovery, if you imagine a curve with a Y and an X-axis, uh, with the X-axis, the X-axis being time. So when things decline along the X-axis, it just goes down. And then it just stays down, so it looks like an L. <laughs> kind of right. like the what's that life support thing, you know, yeah, the heart that line. <laughs> or the that line. Um, the the U shaped then looks like a long boat. So there might be some improvement in the market, but it is going. I, I don't know. It's going to be um, how long the the howl is going to look like. It's going to be a, a funny U. Um, that said, right. Uh, when I hear things from people who talk about the statistics and they go like, oh, the statistics says this or employment numbers are down or unemployment is on the way down, doesn't mean there's no unemployment. So I'm very skeptical about statistics and I feel like you should always take it with a grain of salt. So yes, overall the market is bad because we're taking averages, but there will be pockets where it's going to be hot. So it, it's up to you to, to look for it. Uh, and, and that's why we're here today. So there are growth markets. And I just want to share that um, I was headhunting and uh, in between 2000 and, 2000 and 2003. Um, if those of you of the right age groups, I think you'll remember at first we had the dot-com bubble was on its way de uh, declining. And then it got whacked by this massive bomb in September 11. Um, and then uh, we had bird flu 2002 followed by I, no, was it SARS first and then followed by bird flu? It was one or the other. So there was SARS and then there was bird flu and things were really, really tough. Um, offers were rescinded. 
uh, people were doing U-turns on their whole career, the trajectory all derailed. So, so things were really, really bad. But even then, there were roles I couldn't fill and there were people I couldn't place. So I refuse to accept that it is a, a simple matter of a simple equation of supply and demand because that's not the case. Um, there will be growth markets. And so if you think about it very quickly, there are industries that are still growing. Why? Yes, of course, we've had a trigger that's causing the healthcare market to boom, that's causing um, uh, health-related uh, jobs to, to bloom. Um, but there are other things. I mean, government likes to call it essential services, but energy sector won't die. Um, education is doing okay because, you know, we still have exams. Um, the supply chain roles are still going to be functioning. Um, very hot in the world right now, business recovery, disaster recovery, business continuity planning. So those are very hot. Insurance isn't going to die. And of course, my favorite, um, I, had, I asked my husband this question. I was like, what, what jobs can still exist when things are so bad? Well, anything related to food, right? Because human beings still need to eat. But also anything related to death, I think. So funeral services are going to do well. Okay, that sounds a bit morbid, so let's move on. <laughs> so the market is changing. Um, that, that it's, it's up to us to look for where the needs are. Um, and so what's, what's happening with... Uh, next slide, Adrian. Is there another slide? Yeah, so uh, next time we're going to talk about uh, some strategies, but... Um, well, not yet. We're going to talk about market changes. Market changes, yes, correct. Yeah, you want to show this? Okay. Yeah. okay. So the changes in the market... Um, we're seeing lots of existing searches be on hold. Uh, I, I know a couple of people on this call right now who have had that situation. Things were looking so rosy uh, just three months ago and then everything just went silent. So that's kind of depressing. Next. Um, and if anyone quits, retires or exits an organization, that's unlikely to be uh, backfilled. So that again, reduction in opportunity. Hiring, hiring headcount all frozen. Uh, headcounts were frozen uh, quite a few companies had headcount freezes last quarter already and they just never unfroze. And of course, there are fewer openings because people don't leave. But the jobs are still there. So we want to we wanna talk about how, how you, you can um, outthink the market. So, so the individuals who are already doing some of the things that we're recommending today have managed to find jobs very quickly. Um, those that are, are still looking for work in a, in a very shitty market needs to be a little bit more laser beam, a little bit more pointed, a little bit more um, directed uh, in how they, they think about their work. So if you're currently employed, like we like to say, uh, hunker down and start planning. Um, if you're urgently looking for work, uh, so we're, going, we're about to share a few of those strategies. But I like to add, um, do not think about job titles. Oh, do you have vacancy for me? Would be the worst question to ask. Um, if you have the ability to think a bit long, long term, um, think about what the world is going to look like because we are all constantly evolving. And the moment we have new technology and new ways of working, there will be new problems. With new problems, there are new jobs because where there are problems that require solving, there will be opportunities for you to have a role. What that role is called, I don't know. And it really doesn't matter what the job title is. It matters that there's a need and there's an opportunity for you to re-establish your career in that space. Cool, I'll hand you over to Adrian for the next slide. Thanks, Ian. And it's very true, uh, uh, we, in just this month alone, uh, which in the past three weeks, uh, uh, four of our clients have landed jobs. Okay, and uh, we're not making it up because we have, uh, we have the WhatsApp messages to show you. Uh, it, the, the market, in fact, one of them uh, uh, was, was, uh, was quite a quick hire. Uh, he's, he's, he was uh, approached like a week before last and he signed the offer on last Friday and he's going to start work on 1st of June. So there is market, there is signs of life. Okay, there are signs of life in the market. It's not totally flatline because things still need to get done. Uh, Jobs still are still there. Uh, the, the only big challenge now is that you would have, maybe perhaps you're right, fewer jobs, fewer openings. That's true, like what Yen said. Uh, and a whole lot more competition because a lot of people are going to be looking out for jobs. And, and a lot of people are staying in their jobs, so they're not, they're not making the musical chair movement any easier. So what, what then can you do about it? Okay. Mm, well, the, the most important thing is be realistic. 
uh, we are not here to, to sell you uh, rainbows and, uh, and, and unicorns and everything is going to be fine. You know, you're going to get a job in the next, uh, next three weeks. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, it's, it, you have to be realistic. The market is what, what the market is. And the overall strategy now is not to sit down and cry over how bad the market is, boo-hoo-hoo. Uh, the thing is, what are we going to do? What can we do now? And what are we going to do when the market picks up? And of course, the market will eventually pick up. If you look at how we've handled SARS, how we've handled the GFC, how we've handled, uh, even, even for those of us who are of the particular vintage where we remember 1997, 98 of the Asian financial crisis, uh, well, we, we survived those as well. And likewise, we will survive C19. Uh, it is the people who are ready for the uptick who are going to benefit from it. Okay. Uh, and, and, and when the market picks up, you want to be there. One, one side, side note and side story, I always uh, joke with my team. Like uh, Singaporeans here, you know uh, this company called Honest Bee, right? And Honest Bee, you know, they, they disintegrated and they shut down uh, their, their main operations. And, and Honest Bee is in, is in home delivery services. They kind of wound down their, their home delivery bits uh, in the fourth quarter of last year because they weren't doing well and, and there were some things going on in there. But uh, I was just talking to my wife the other day and I said that, you know, interestingly, uh, if they were still around, they'd be having boom time right now. Okay, everyone's all doing delivery, home runs and everything. So, so sometimes it's, it's about weathering the storm so that when the storm is over, you're there, okay, to, to reap the benefits. And if you look at uh, uh, our careers, what can we do? So, well, right now, be realistic. The market's going to be quiet. If there are jobs, we go for it. If there are none, how do we prepare? Which leads us on to the first strategy. And the first strategy is basically be focused. Let's be focused. Uh, you cannot spread around, you cannot spread your, your joy around uh, for, for um, it's, 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 it's not, uh, sorry, it, you have to be very focused. You cannot just, what we call spray and pray. So you have to have a job search strategy, okay? Uh, you have to, you have to uh, be very, very targeted in what you want to do. So don't do a spray and pray. A spray and pray is basically sending out CVs to everybody uh, and say, uh, dear recruiter, do you have a job for me? Okay. Uh, why don't you do that? Because number one, it's not effective. Number two, it's very depressing because when no one responds to you, you're going to feel very disheartened and you're going to go, hey, but what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my profile? You know, something's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just that you have to be very focused. The other thing we just, the other term we just coined recently is this term called tag and bag. Okay. And tag and bag basically means you go hunt for, uh, you go look for a recruiter or head hunter, and then you tag with the guy and then you go begging for a job. Please, uh, do you have anything open on your table, you know, on your, on your plate? You know, can, can I have it? No. So don't spray and pray, don't tag and bag. Okay. Uh, you have to be very focused in what you want to do. And, and being focused basically means that you need to know where is the market, where is the market demand? Who's hiring? What, is, what, are the people, uh, what are the people looking out for? Right now, sales would be interesting because a lot of sales are down. Uh, supply chain as well, people need to rationalize the supply chain. Uh, there's a huge demand now for, for BCP, uh, business continuity planning. And, and it's really funny because last year we had two clients who were in BCP and they were complaining about how underappreciated they were how the company felt that they were nuisance and how the, uh, their, their, their internal clients were saying, ah, yeah, waste of time, ah, it's never going to happen now. Uh, and right now, they're all, they're all in hot demand. So, so the BCP uh, guys are there, the supply chain guys, are, the demand is still going to be there. So go to where the demand is. But apart from going to the demand, which is, which is uh, looking at, looking at where, where uh, the hiring is, you also need to be familiar with what your skills are. What can you offer to those people with the demand? Uh, what are your superpowers? What can you do? What value can you create for the organization that you want to join? And you have to be very, very clear in, your, in defining and articulating your skills. Uh, our clients here on, on the call who have attended the Career Clarity Workshop will be able to share with you how, how uh, important it is to be able to define your skill sets and your value, and your value creation clearly, not just at the interview, but even at the front end of meeting people and talking to, and, and when you talk to people as well. So you must be very clear on what your skills are. So the first key strategy is you've got to be focused. Don't run about like a headless chicken, as my, uh, one of my ex-bosses used to say. Uh, number two, strategy number two is prepare. Now is the time to be, now is the time that's a bit quiet. Now is the time for preparation. How do you access the hidden job market? What are your network strategies? 
Now is the time to start sowing seeds in the field. Okay, you talk to your old ex bosses. You you got to get your messaging correct. You got to know what what it is. So one one of my one of our clients, uh, he just called me up yesterday to tell me he landed a job. And what was really interesting was that uh, he he had gone to the WSG coaches. Uh, he had gone to several other coaches, and and they all started focusing on his CV and everything. But I said no no no. Let's 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 focus on your network strategies, talk to your ex-bosses, uh, know how to position them yourself, know how to pitch yourself to them. And, and he did just that. And interestingly, his ex-boss uh, called, him, uh, called him up just uh, last Monday and made him an offer. And, and he, he signed up the offer last, uh, he's going to sign the offer this afternoon, actually. So what, how do you access the hidden, hidden job market? And the hidden job market here relates to, to uh, roles that are not advertised. Okay, uh, roles that are passed on from friend to friend. These are all good leads. Uh, there are strategies involved, and and how are you assessing these? Uh, can I can I just add about the networking yes, and ex bosses? Um, so the thing about uh, hiring in the shitty market, spare a thought for the hiring manager because um, they're probably very very stressed uh, for a variety of reasons. Either there's just so much work, or they have been told to work but with handcuffs on. So they, they're probably thinking, gee, I, I need all the help I can get, but um, uh, if, if not, I look bad. And so they're the ones who are also sitting on a, on, a, on a time bomb. And if you can articulate how you can make that time bomb go away or, or, or fix the issues that make them look bad, um, then they're likely to select you. So it's, 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 it's something that job seekers uh, generally forget. They, they, it's not that you don't empathize with the hiring manager. It's just that you're just overly overwhelmed by perhaps your own, um, like, oh, I need to get a job, I need to get a job. But hang on, who's hiring you? And it doesn't mean that they're all secure as well because they're probably thinking, what if they themselves are going to be out of work and if they mo make the wrong move or they hire the wrong person? So your job is to um, um, work together and complement um, the potential hiring manager to make sure that you both look good together. And that would be a very key networking strategy. Good. So networking is one of the key things that you need to focus on, especially in this downtime. Uh, there are strategies, as we always say, and we do, we do a show, I mean, our clients will be able to share with you how, how effective networking is. Uh, and also, how do you amplify your networking game? And uh, your networking game can be amplified using uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we call it the ultimate job hunting platform. Uh, LinkedIn is not just used for applying for jobs. Okay, uh, we have our own philosophy towards that. That a lot that that clicking apply for jobs on LinkedIn uh, should not be the only method of using LinkedIn. It should be uh, complemented with a set of other activities on LinkedIn, like to how to increase your profile, how to sharpen your branding, and how to sharpen your positioning on LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn is a very noisy market as well, and in recent weeks, it's become noisier because more people are have more free time on their hands. So they are, they are posting silly puppy videos and uh, environmental Save the Earth videos, uh, which, which annoy me to, to bits. But uh, it's, 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 it's diffusing uh, the effectiveness of LinkedIn. But nonetheless, you have to up your LinkedIn game. Okay, And there are ways around it. Uh, and if you up your LinkedIn game well enough, uh, you will very shortly be able to A, attract the right type of, uh, not headhunters, but right type of hiring managers, the right type of companies. To, to come approach you, okay? Uh, so LinkedIn is very important, you need to look at it. And of course, um, your CV. Um, your CV, are you positioned correctly? Uh, Yen, you wanna jump in on this bit? This is your favorite piece. No, it's not. It's just that you hear me complain about uh, <laughs> fully written resumes that they pay $300 to some professional writer just to shove buzzwords and make it formatted pretty. So, so I'm giving you a chance to get this off your, go, get off your chest. So uh, go, so, go. So, so the resume isn't a very large part of your game. It is in fact, it should only make an appearance uh, when you have a qualified opportunity. Because if the opportunity is not qualified, it's not like a resume is not like socks, you know, one size fits all. Um, there is, you, you're going to write, rewrite it every single time to be, to answer uh, to each role specifically, um, and then you want to keep it, you want to keep it for its 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 use uh, very sparingly, because when you flood the market with your resume, you dilute your value, and that's not that's not uh, uh, not, not not the right thing to do. So uh, the key word in this bullet point is position. So 
use the right words, make sure that the lingo appeals to the reader, answers the question, why should I even bother interviewing you? Um, and and, and it, sometimes it's just the final, um, that, that final bit that makes all the difference uh, towards the end when your when the opportunity is a qualified lead, okay? Don't, don't pay 300 bucks and then expect someone to write it for you. You have to write it yourself. And so if that person offers a CV writing service, um, make sure that the person understands exactly what you do and how um, you want to be positioned and who is going to be reading it. And maybe you should learn how to tweak your own resume as well. Yeah, maybe, I'm done. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe in the future, Yen, we, we might want to run and ask me anything on, on uh, CV best practices. Huh? huh? But uh, everyone's <laughs> unique. Everyone's different. So yeah, but there's some, there's I, some I universal. Know. But there's some universal things like don't don't include things like proficient in Microsoft Office. Oh goodness. Oh, well, I haven't seen too many people do that anymore. I think people are getting smarter. Um, but there's still that little bit that's missing. The 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 yeah. The, theme. the punch. Yeah. The punch. But yeah. that's very unique to each individual. So I'm still cracking yes. my head around how we're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean general because one of the just as a side note, guys. Uh, uh, one, one of the questions you always ask is how many versions of your CV should you have? And 285. <laughs> yeah, the answer is infinite. Okay, uh, every every CV should be customized to the job. So so there are lots of things uh, to unpack over there. But let's do it another time. Um, so so uh, strategy one was. Who remembers what strategy one is? Okay, strategy one is focus. Okay, be specific. Focus, okay. Strategy two is prepare. Now, strategy three is Goya. Goya is an acronym for get off your ass. Okay, don't sit down and be passive about it. Don't be, don't be reactive. Okay, be proactive. Go out and hunt for the jobs. I'm not saying, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not saying you gotta, you gotta run, run uh, like, like crazy out there. But, but it depends on how aggressive you are. Your success rate in landing a job a lot of times is, is, is contingent upon how, you, how much work you do. Okay, how much effort you put in. Uh, who are you networking? Are you networking enough? Are you networking with the right people? Are you positioned correctly? Uh, what's your messaging? What is your job search strategy? Is your job search strategy uh, uh, a workable one? Okay, uh, and if it isn't, how do you improve it? You know, you, you can try on your own. You can go do all the research you want, uh, but just picking up the just picking up the phone, uh, engaging a career coach, talking to someone who knows what they're doing, uh, can shorten your your curve a lot. And and even if you've got to pay for for uh, coaching services, you know, the ROI, the return on investment, is 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 it speaks for itself. Okay. Uh, so be proactive, take action. Don't sit down and go online and start complaining. Oh, the government did this, the government did that, foreign talent did this. Okay, uh, no. Okay, uh, get off your ass and get stuff done. Uh, Yen will tell you set targets. Be very disciplined. Uh, you you have to be able to to track what you want to do. How many people should you meet? Uh, should you speak to? How many emails should you send out? How many, uh, uh, how many approaches should you make? So set targets uh, over the next three months or six months uh, so that you have uh, developed a regular uh, uh, habit and a cadence to build the front end of your job funnel. And of course, uh, most importantly, you have to get tough. Uh, you have to be resilient. Uh, it's going to be a lot of no's before even in good times, it's always a lot of no's before a yes comes in, and and right now you know we are gonna get a lot more no's and uh, fewer yeses. But if you work hard enough uh, and if you do the right things and do things right, okay, uh, there will be good outcomes. And and there are also strategies involved. Like for instance, I spoke to a client yesterday, and and and, and she was telling me that, uh, but I'm not looking for a job because she's 52 and and she's she's kind of tired of corporate world already. So, so she's saying that, uh, but I'm not looking for a job. So uh, I'm not in job hunting mode. I just want to look for some consultancy gigs to do to work, to run a portfolio career. But we tell her that, yeah, exactly, you see. It's not about getting a job, it's about getting a meaningful role. So uh, you're going to get a lot of no's before you get a yes. So you got to be tough, mentally tough as well. So in conclusion, uh, things aren't all that bad, okay? Hiring is still going on. We still have clients of ours who have targeted correctly. They know how to do it. Uh, they are, they are, they are, a lot of our clients here on the call, uh, they will be able to share with you that they're still getting calls from headhunters, okay? And, and from hiring managers. The hiring may not be now. The hiring could be for something in, in June, July, August. But right now is the time to get on everyone's radar. Uh, take charge of your situation. 
proactively seek out the new roles and, and go where the demand is. Okay, like what Yen said, think about problems to solve, think about skills. So let me give you an example. Uh, you have to be very, not just resilient, but you have to be agile. One good example is Gabby, our GM. Okay, when she was, she joined us in January and she was supposed to handle the B2B markets, uh, which means the, the corporate clients. But as you know, uh, C19 happened and the corporate clients all decided to uh, freeze everything. But you know, she's, uh, she, she's agile enough to pivot uh, and, and, and they say, okay, look, let's handle the B2C piece because the market's still there. Uh, let's do the social media. Let's do, let's do uh, digital marketing on, on all these pieces. So you have to go wh where the problems are and what can you solve. And if there are, what are your skills that you have, they can solve those problems. And if you don't have the skills, you may have to upgrade yourself during this period of quiet. So go to where the demand is. And you know what? This advice, as I'm sharing to you, it's a lot easier said than done. And I absolutely agree if you're saying that. But it's so easy to say, go to where the demand is, okay? Uh, that's where you really need to have your career strategy down pat. You need to have your job search strategy down pat. And uh, not just in bits and pieces. It's not just, I want to do my CV today. Oh, tomorrow I'll do my LinkedIn. There's a whole coherent string of activities that you need to do. Uh, which you need to learn how to manage, okay? And, and if, once you figure it out, uh, that's, uh, things, good things will start happening. So those are the three key strategies. Be focused, be prepared, and get off your ass, okay? So uh, right now, we want to open up uh, to the questions. Anyone wants uh, questions to ask? I think, Adrian, there was this question from Jermaine that's in the chat box. I'll just uh, reply, okay? She says that I love that you say that don't focus on job titles. So true. I have a question as to how you don't end up under or overselling yourself. Always oversell yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, understand yourself, you're not going to get a job, but don't over oversell. Uh. Again? Uh, um, the, that, that's a generic question. It's going to be very difficult to answer without a context. So, so you, you want to, uh, again, so there's, a, there's tactics around it, which means that um, within a specific context, um, the need of the organization, the, the outlook for that organization in the next few months, in the next one year, um, your job function, um, how bad the need is, who loves who more, What's the bargaining power? You know, we've got to analyze um, and uh, each specific context before you can decide what's the right tone or pitch. And you're right, there is going to be underselling is going to limit your ability to be selected. Overselling, people are going to see through the bluster. Um, and so there's a there's a there's a note that's just going to hit just right. And my answer to that, a long answer to a short question, um, is um, knowledge. Okay, the more information you have, the better your strategy. So um, you've got to figure out how bad your pain is, answer the pain. Figure out character and personality of the line manager, how long he's been there, what's his, what's his agenda. Um, figure out all of the stakeholders because he's not just the only one who's going to say yes. There might be other line managers who want their people in instead of you. Um, somebody internal might not like you. <laughs> somebody internal might not like your lying boss. You know your your hiring boss. So so there 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 are too many tactical issues, and so you've got to hit the right notes with the right level of research. So you've got to research like crazy. So secondary research is not going to get you anywhere. So don't just waste time looking at websites because the websites just tell you the good things. Um, you've got to research the the company, um, the product, um, the forecast of the product, the forecast of the organization, um, new CEO, old CEO, is there, a, is there been a new, a, a, anything, you know, um, and then do some primary research, talk to people, what's it what, like working in there, what's going on, what's the hidden agenda, that, that's a lot. The more you find out, the better your positioning, okay? Okay, I'm going to jump in here with a shameless plug, okay? <laughs> Uh, what what Yen is just shared about okay is what we do at our interview masterclass session, which is now gone online. Okay, it's a two hour two hour session. Uh, many of our clients here as well have, have gone through it as well, where where you you are taught uh, uh, the interview strategies, not the tactics, but interview strategies. Okay, uh, what what is what is unique about the session is that uh, it's geared towards people who are a bit more senior, who are you more used to giving interviews than getting interviews. And, and many of us here will go like, hey, but I'm not going for any interviews now. There are no jobs. So why should I go for interview training now? Uh, we would like to 
our, our philosophy is that every meeting is an interview. Okay. Every time you meet someone, every time you talk to a, a potential hiring manager, even offline or you have coffee with someone, or, or you know, it's, it's an interview because if you can leave a correct shape and a correct understanding of what you do, okay, very clear and concisely, then when the opportunity comes up, they will know. So let me share you a, 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 a story which I share with all our clients, okay? Uh, it's, it's about, it's about uh, outside a party once and I, I met this guy and this guy asked him, what do you do? And he said, oh, I do M&A, uh, mergers acquisitions in China, in Shanghai. And we just chatted and everything else, had a couple of drinks and then it moved on. Three weeks after that meeting, I, had, uh, I was talking to a client and he looked really worried and I said, what's, what's that? Why are you, why are you worrying? Why do you look so uh, troubled? And he said, well, I have, uh, uh, my acquisition in Shanghai is going south. It's really, really bad. I don't want to handle it. And I said, hey, I know this guy. Okay. Uh, I, met, I matched them both. He got an offer within two days. And unfortunately, I, uh, I was not able to bill uh, for that placement because it was not really a search. But imagine if that guy I met at the party asked, hey, what do you do? And he says, finance. He would never have gotten the job. But you see, he was able to, to define himself so clearly. And that's where the strategy comes in about your positioning. And that's what, that's what we do at the interview masterclass. So, so yes, I hope that answers your question, Jermaine. And uh, nice to hear from you again, Jermaine. It's been a while since we caught up. Okay, next question, uh, Gabby. Yeah, we have a question about LinkedIn from Nicole. Nicole is saying that LinkedIn is always viewed as the solution to everything. <laughs> and yet, uh, how high really is the success rate in reality? So actually, there are a couple of questions here. So are we using LinkedIn as job seekers in the wrong way? Is it, is it really about creating specific con content or is it about connecting to thousands of people? So essentially, Nicole is asking about your LinkedIn strategy. Okay, I'll answer this first uh, because I'm willing. Uh, Adrian, Adrian is going to talk about for four days on this topic. Adrian. Five, five days. So five days. You, you need to give, you need to just give the cliff notes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. Uh, the bottom line is this. Uh, there, 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 there are yeah. three questions in here of which each question I can speak for four days. So you're looking at about 12 days worth of content. Okay, Sermon on the Mount, I'll be preaching. But uh, the bottom line is this. Um, LinkedIn is like your Swiss Army knife. Okay, you can use it for various things. You can use it to entertain. You can use it to increase your profile. You can use it to get a job. You can use it to market yourself. So it all depends on what you want to use LinkedIn for. Uh, LinkedIn is the solution to everything, Nicole says. Kind of true, but a bit overrated. Okay, and, and there's such thing as, as a backward bending curve for LinkedIn usage. You do too much of something, you're going to damage your brand or uh, it could hurt you in, in the long run. So LinkedIn is a separate topic by itself. And another shameless plug, okay, uh, we, we do have a session on LinkedIn as well, okay? Uh, this this, this, this uh, is a two-hour online uh, live, live webinar like this uh, where, where we talk about how do you tie in networking for people who don't like networking? So if I ask you now, who, who doesn't like networking? A lot of people will go, yeah, me, me, me. So how, since networking is such a critical piece of the job hunt, how then do you network when you don't like to network, okay? So we have a session called Networking for People Who Hate Networking and it's tied up together with LinkedIn strategies for job hunting. So if you want to job hunt for instance, let me give you a, a, a thing, uh, another, another tip is that, you know, you go on LinkedIn, a lot of the job ads there are fake. How do you spot the fake ones from the real ones, okay? Uh, how do you increase when you, when you jump into the, when you jump into a, you see a job you really like, it's like, wow, this job, my dream job, you know? But then you see number of applicants, 342 applicants already. Then it's like, uh, how do I get myself ahead of the power? There are strategies involved in that. Uh, we can show you as well. So yes, uh, LinkedIn is a powerful tool. You need to know what your objective is and follow through. Because if you're not careful, LinkedIn is a dangerous tool that we can, I can tell you, I'll give you two examples. I'll give you one, since there's no time. Since others didn't tell me to shut up. Uh, <laughs> so one, one example is, is this person uh, who who kept posting a lot of controversial stuff, okay? Uh, even not very controversial stuff, but, but borderline controversial stuff on, online, on LinkedIn, thinking that the higher my profile is, the more people will know of me, they will hire me. I got a call from, uh, he was at the tail end of the interview process already, okay? And, I, and the hiring manager called me up because uh, I'm quite well known. So the hiring manager uh, uh, is, a, is a friend of mine, called me up and said, hey, this guy, uh, should we hire this guy? Because he is shouting so much on LinkedIn, we are scared that he might say something wrong and affect the business. And I say, oh, he's a good guy. I, I vouch for him because I know this guy. But in the end, the hiring manager did not make the offer because they said, this guy is a risk. 
because it's too loud on LinkedIn. So backward bending curve, you've got to be careful. Okay. okay. Uh, Gabby, next question. Yeah, so we have a question from Sharp Nam, who I'm pronouncing right. What if you're not acquainted with anyone in the organization you are eyeing? The, the thing about um, networking and connectivity is that we are all separated by degrees of separation, as you all know. So there will be someone who will be able to speak for you, even if they don't belong into the, in the organization. And here's another little tip, Shabnam. Um, chances of people securing a job because someone pulled them in anecdotally is less than someone external recommending to the company. Strangely enough, okay, because um, if, if the internal person pulls you in, there's usually a lot of emotional baggage. Uh, sometimes it's related to, uh, have, I'm, some, I'm, I'm sure some of you have heard this, right? Oh, um, I, I don't think the line manager wants me because I feel like he might be threatened by me. And, and if, if you feel that way, it's, it's, it's an, an internal thing. So sometimes um, the, the internal person doesn't want you to join his team because he doesn't, he doesn't, he might like you as a friend, but he may not want you on his team. He, he thinks you might make him look bad or there are all sorts of issues. But if an external person goes, oh, here, I've got this dude, you, I recommend him. And then um, as a line manager, you uh, evaluate him and then leave me out of the equation. Uh, sometimes that recommendation helps a little bit more. So Shatnam, I think you should try multiple prongs. Um, look at um, not just someone internal. The internal person can give you, can help a little bit by giving you some insider information. Um, or maybe the, in, sometimes the inside person doesn't know as much as an outside person. Okay, and, and so the organization doesn't work in a vacuum. There will be people that, there'll be organizations they work with, business partners. Um, broaden your your network um, targets. I suspect that you will have someone already in your phone who would know someone and who would know about the company. Okay. Yeah, good points. And um, it's it's all got to do with strategies, lah. Networking networking is a, is a strategy game. Okay. Yeah. It's not about attending uh, networking events. It's not about uh, who you know. Okay. Uh, there are there are strategies involved which we which we will delve into. We don't have enough time here to delve into it. Otherwise, it's another two hours. Okay. Three but days. but three days. Yeah, three days. Uh, and 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 so we, we can't jump into it. But but needless to say, it's it's uh it's a strategy. Everything's got to do with strategy. Okay. It's not about tactics. Uh, it's not enough to know what what what. It's not enough to know the right people. Okay. Uh, what what's your message to them? And uh, it needs to be crafted, needs to be practiced, which is what we cover in our, in our, in our networking uh, uh, program, uh, basically. Okay, next question. Yes, we have a question from Tan Kim Hong. He's saying that, do you think the current telecommute work style will create a new set of jobs for remote virtual home workers? Yes. It is a viable area as it targets people on temp offline, like maternal, or paternity leave, etc. Mm. There is, uh, in, in every company, in every evolution, <laughs> there will be new jobs, there'll be new problems, there'll be new needs. So yes, um, that it's, it's, it's a very viable one, um, remote, remote work. In fact, right now, uh, there are causes on, oh, what is the etiquette for online interviewing? And what's the difference between uh, video interviewing and live interviewing? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things I should look out for if I were to be uh, evaluated remotely um, and that's something we also touch on so is it the angle of the lighting is it my virtual background is it how I speak to the camera what are some of the tricks should I be wearing this color um, remember uh, Adrian when we uh, advised our friend to sit not on his couch because the light it was all dark and he <laughs> as a dark-skinned man was hidden and all you saw was his smile <laughs> yeah it looked it looked it looked uh, uh, it looked he looked like the, the Unabomber Okay. It was slightly creepy, yeah. yeah like, like, so, so yeah. So lighting is important, you know. Uh, the tonality of your voice, how sexy you want your voice to be. Uh, Taking uh, turns uh, to talk. Yeah. Okay. So things like this. Uh, there, there are strategies once again involved. Uh, uh, and and I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, not 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 kitten videos, but on on. Uh, interestingly, now now one of the topics of my pet topics is uh, hostage negotiation. Okay, uh, which is quite interesting because it's 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 about it's about people who it's it's delivered by FBI agent. Okay, who goes around? Uh, it's it's about negotiations. Okay, but uh, he's talking about how does the tonality of your voice, 
how do you switch over to a more calming and easygoing voice? How he puts the other person at rest versus how you're going to go and sell and push. So, so uh, it, it all happens. It all works. Uh, it, it's critical to know during a period where you can't sense or feel the other party at the interview. But uh, you're going to transmit through what you're, what you're gesticulating. Are you gesticulating too much? Or, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just basically very limited cues. And how that, then do you do it? So, yeah, uh, a whole new field is popping up. Uh, I, much as I don't like uh, telecommuting, I'm actually seeing the benefits of telecommuting. Okay, uh, it gives me an extra hour and a half a day. And what do you want to do with hour and a half? Uh, yeah, I go out, I, I go for a walk, you know, I clear my mind. Uh, things won't be back to normal again. So how do we adapt to it? Hey, questions? Yeah, so there was a follow-up question from Shatnam. Essentially, how relentless should she be? And uh, it's a fine line here. Yeah, of course, there's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a right pitch, so... Um, Maybe you want to take this offline. That, 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 I mean, I don't know you, so I, I can't say um, be more assertive. Uh, there are people whom I've met who are a little bit too passive. And uh, then there are those that are overly assertive. And so they come on too strong. Mm -hmm. um, some people are overly eager. They tip the balance and then they, they get labeled as desperate. So that's not really a health, healthy thing. Or too passive, so you're not interested in me. Um, how, 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 how keen are you on this role? Because I don't hear any level of interest, you know. So then for those people, I'll say, hey, you know, dial it up a little bit. Um, in terms of how urgent you want to do your job search, I mean, there, Adrian, we were talking about three or four different groups of people, right? So if you're currently an urgent job seeker because you need to put food on the table, um, the strategy is very different. Um, you don't have the luxury of thinking about what I want to do with the rest of my life. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have to be a little bit more um, practical. Um, and and some, some individuals we've met who are currently still employed, then yes, you have a little bit more runway to plan a long-term strategy and only take roles that will um, leverage you and, and, and something you can uh, jump off into the next stage and the next stage. And then you have a very nice upward trajectory in your career. So everyone's different. Um, Shatnam, I hope that helps. One, one thing I want to jump in here also is that uh, in terms of how relentless you should be uh, in terms of a job search or in terms of uh, finding the, the right role for you, uh, like what Yen said, there's a limit to how relentless you can be, okay? Uh, to the point where you become pesky or to the point where you get fatigued. Uh, my, and our advice to you is this. If you, you should be tenacious, you should be persistent, sometimes to the point of being uh, obstinate, okay, uh, in terms of not giving up, persevering. But like what Einstein said, uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results. So if you are getting, if you are getting into a, a stage where you are trying the same thing over and over again, not getting results and, and just ramping up the effort of doing more of the same thing is not going to help you. So that's point in time where you need to pause and sit down. Should I hire a coach? Who knows what they're doing? Should I invest? The additional three months of me doing the same thing and not getting a result, okay? Uh, in terms of money, in terms of salary-wise, is it worth me trying to do it? It's, it's, I can tell you, you know, uh, I, uh, side, side story. Uh, I had uh, four years back, I decided to try rollerblading, okay? At the tender age of 44, I decided to try rollerblading. And uh, I tried for weeks, I couldn't try. I, I, I could figure out how to get on the blade, how, how to how to go in a straight line, but I could never figure out how to stop without the help of a wall, okay, or a tree or a bush. So uh, <laughs> I engaged the coach finally and, and uh, yeah, within two days, I could figure out how to do it. So, so uh, if you are doing the same thing over and over again and you're not getting any results, maybe it's time to talk to a coach, uh, get some professional advice okay? and, and, and don't, don't be relentless for relentless sake. Okay, we have a couple more questions because we only have time for two more. This is from DW. We said, hi, Adrian. Could you elaborate more on job search strategies? Okay. Are you going to talk for another four days? <laughs> <laughs> we, should be charging for, we should be charging for this content. But anyway, uh, wait a minute, we do. So, okay. Uh, but but what, what uh, okay. In a nutshell, 
it's not once again uh, DW. Uh, it's not about uh, uh, the the opposite of job search strategy is what we call spray and pray. Okay, uh, it means you hit anything and everyone. Uh, it's job. Uh, the opposite of job search strategy is to go through the traditional route, which is now dead. Applying for jobs is dead, it's passe. Okay, it's about as passe as someone saying, hey, I need a job. Let me check out Saturday morning's newspapers to see what the appointments page opportunities have for me. Uh, and the younger people who are on, on this call are going now like, what's a newspaper? But anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so, so uh, no, no, that, that, that's what we call not having a job search strategy or just applying for anything. Or you know, going for the interview and then an interviewer asks you what 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 what's your superpower? How can you help our organization? And then you start going, I want this job because I want this job, I can do that, you know, it, it's all about me. So so having a job search strategy, DW, it's about about taking a step back, and understanding where do I fit in this uh, bigger scheme of things, how do I position myself, who's gonna buy my skill, what are my skills? Okay, and and is the job gonna be is it is it a long-term solution? Okay. So once again, uh, there are various strategies, there's job search strategies. And, and if you look at job search strategies, a lot of people, they, they think about the most obvious thing, which is CV. That's why they will pay someone $400 just to do a CV. And the, and the CV writer is just going to redo the font for you or change the color or put in some fancy pictures. It's not going to be that. It's a whole value chain of activities. Okay, All the way, not just a CV, but your positioning, your marketing, how do you market? Who do you market to? What's the messaging? Who, who, how, do you, how do you get there? How do you network into that space? So the job search strategy is not just about looking, knowing which job portal to apply to. Okay, there's a lot of activities up at the front end. But one thing you can be assured of is that your results are going to be better if you have a strategy in play rather than just doing it. Suka, suka. I just like to do this. I should do that. It's not going to happen very easily. Okay. Uh, we have... Well, one question from Lata, she says, how do we connect with recruiters and get them to be interested in taking your calls? Yeah, your fat topic. Uh, um, don't, don't waste time with recruiters. Okay, <laughs> don't, shoot, don't shoot me if you're a recruiter. Uh, Any recruiters you. online, we, we, were, we, were uh, formerly, we were formerly in I, this. I was, a, I was a former recruiter and um, if a recruiter doesn't take your call, it's because you're not in his market or his space or you're not, you're not you don't fit into his current portfolio of roles to fill. Um, you've, if you think about it, right, the recruiter answers to who? The person who pays his fee. So if the line or the company says, I want um, this specific profile and, and you don't fit that profile, the recruiter would be shot if he gives your profile to the, the hiring company. Um, I'm just again generalizing here because there are organizations uh, where, where there are hiring managers who don't know what they want until they see it. Um, it's a little bit like going on a blind date. Huh? So I say, well, just go for the blind date anyway. You never know, you might just fall in love. So, so I, I recognize that that is the strategy sometimes. But uh, for when, when there's a mediator, when there's a, when there's a middleman, the middleman answers to someone and if he gives um, his master something the master doesn't ask for, then he's never going to get business from this hiring manager again. So, but when you are the prime candidate, you can tell because the recruiter is going to keep you warm. He's going to update you all the time. In fact, he's going to be calling you every other month because he knows at some point he will place you because you're in his market. Um, as a general strategy, I recommend that you get a few recruiters to uh, help you look for opportunities if, if there are. Um, make sure that you're on their radar, but then don't focus on that. Okay, that's not your focus area. Your focus should be on networking. So you want to spend the majority of your job search time um, on, on nourishing and nurturing the network of people who are going to be uh, giving you opportunities in the long run. Okay, so, so again, if, if there are any young people listening in, guys, um, uh, the, 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 the relationships you built today, um, the, the things that you do for your current bosses, your current stakeholders, is going to come back to you two, three years, five years, ten years down the road because you've established a long and warm relationship uh, with these people. Um, you'll help them, they'll help you back. Okay, so uh, in, in a nutshell, focus on that. You can have a couple of recruiters on the side, but it, that's not your main game plan, okay? I remember uh, like what Yan said, uh, the recruiters don't work for you. Yeah. Okay? They, work for the, they work for the clients. 
And uh, you'll be surprised how many times I get candidates when I was head hunting, candidates telling me, hey, Adrian, you, 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 you're you not working hard enough. Uh, you're not giving enough job leads. Like, oh, goodness. Right, sure, I can. Uh, sure you give me one third of your first year annual income uh, as a fee upfront now. I'll find a job for you. Lah. You know, yeah. But until then, you can just, uh, you can just take a number and wait. And, and of course, I can tell you that sending in CV, once, once again, job search strategies, okay? You're sending your CV blind to a recruiter, it's just going to get dumped, throw, trashed straight away. Okay? The various reasons. Number one, unsolicited. Number two, I don't even know who you are. Number three, you're addressing me, dear recruiter. Number four, uh, I'm the life science recruiter and you are the finance banking guy. True to me, I'm not going to pass to my friend or my colleague. You know? I'm just going to dump it. It's a waste of time. And number, number five, number six, number seven, reason number 15 is, you know how many hundred CVs we get a day or not? Okay, it's ridiculous. Okay, we can't keep it. Let alone read it. We don't want to keep it. Let alone read it. Okay. So mm -hmm. so yeah. Uh, don't don't look at uh, uh, recruiters as your main thing. Uh, you will learn during the networking uh, 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 sessions that we, that we conduct uh, that that it's it's only going to form twenty percent of your strategy of your job search strategy. Or less. Or less. Uh, less. I think about five percent because. Yep. Yeah. It's just it's just. Uh, and, and I hate to say this, uh, moving forward, uh, it, it, there's going to be a decreasing importance of recruiters. Mm. Yeah. We have a very interesting question from Kristen. She's saying that travel is probably the most depressed sector right now and going forward. Do you have any tips for how to articulate transferable skills from the travel industry to other business sectors? You know, we were just talking about this. I was like, what do you do with the resorts that's underutilized? Uh, Kristen, you 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 have um many transferable skills. Uh, we're going to have to talk to talk about this separately. Uh, one of the biggest things that you bring to the table, by the way, is business strategy. So your pivot is going to be a little bit tougher. Uh, by the way, everyone, I know Kristen. So so your your pivot is going to be a little bit tough. Uh, but it's not 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 impossible. Uh, we got to figure out whether or not you want to reinvent, unbundle, um, and think about where your, your next uh, next area of interest is, okay? Lots, lots of things. Uh. So many things. And, uh, yeah, so many. Uh, one last business strategy. Her, her business strategy is really good. She's really good at negotiations and making deals. Mm. And, 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 yeah, and, and you also have a wealth of knowledge of the dynamics, uh, the consumer behavior of the trends and and, and uh, the properties around Asia as well. So there lot, those are transferable things. It's not just the skills, but the knowledge as well. Okay. I feel like once we have a vaccine, the travel sector is going to boom. So sometimes it's a matter of waiting it out. I, 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 th I feel like you, you, if you go into any chat group today and you're like, what's the first thing you're going to do once they lift the circuit <laughs> travel. breaker? How many? It's like ninety percent of the people are saying, "I'm going to book my next holiday." No, no, no. The first thing I'm going to do, Yen, when the circuit breaker lifts, is go get a Big Mac. Uh, I'm just assuming McDonald's comes back. <laughs> but but wait, circuit breaker is one thing. I, I feel like once there's a vaccine, airlines are going to boom, travel's going to boom, the hotels are going to be overbooked and we're not enough people for those markets. Yeah. But but right now, um, it, it, it's a little bit tough. Uh, we've got friends who have um, moved on from uh, different roles into uh, uh, healthcare right now. One of them is... Uh, um, doing uh, healthcare type of work in, in the expo right now, just, just having been redeployed. So things are not quite normal right now. But Kristen, you're going to be just fine. Hang in there. <laughs> hey, we have one last question because we're over, over time, actually. Yeah. So a question from Kim Yen. She's like, how effective is it to network potential hiring managers from LinkedIn whom you don't know for potential opportunities? If yes, so what messages would be appropriate, especially for current job seekers? Well, I, I think, uh, Kim, uh, good question once again. I think uh, it, it's, it all depends on, on situation, uh, okay? Whether or not you are networking for a job or whether you're networking for networking sake, for a future job. Uh, what we always say is, uh, do not do not network with, with uh, the intention of, of me, 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 okay? Get to know the other person, uh, get to know what the challenges are, you know, uh, things like that. One thing you will realize about Yen and myself is that when we do network, uh, we don't talk about business alone. 
like uh, I can tell you a lot of our clients here uh, who, are, who are on, on this call, uh, I know them quite personally. Okay, I know, I know how many kids they have, you know, I know what the situation is like. Uh, last Friday, we did a, we did a private, uh, ask me any, uh, we did a private uh, uh, Zoom alumni call for our clients. We had about 100 people, uh, about 40 people as well. And, and uh, 40 of our clients, uh, they came on last, last Friday morning. And I can tell you, each of those 40 people, I know them all by name and I know their history and everything. Okay, so, so it's not that my memory is very good, but I'm genuinely interested in people. Okay, and, 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 that's, uh, and people know that when you're authentic. So when you're networking, you have to be authentic. And uh, it's not just about, about what can I get out of it, but what can, how can I help you? And then let the conversations flow smoothly. Right, Yen? Last thing you want to do is to message someone and go, do you have a job for me? How many have, of that have you uh, uh, received, Gabby? I think, I think I've received at least uh, five. I just got one, another, another one yesterday. And you were so you were you're quite upset, right? You actually posted it on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a learning point for people what not and to Facebook. do. And Facebook as well. You were posting on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, human. Got job for me. Okay. I have no idea who they are, so it was a little bit disturbing. Yeah. Okay. Uh okay, quick. Uh so so in conclusion, uh are you seeing this screen now? What what want to learn how to do better? Uh Gabby, is is the screen up? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. So, so the, the bottom line is this, okay? Uh, in, in, a, in a shitty job market, uh, the opportunities, opportunities are still going to be there. Uh, you have to be more focused, more strategic about things. You, if what you're doing isn't working, then seek help, okay? Uh, and, and you prepare the groundwork now. You lay the seeds for when the market picks up because just like uh, honest be, you know, uh, just hang around long enough for the sun to come up again and then you'll be, you'll be strong. Okay. But if you want to learn how to do it better, uh, just a quick, quick uh, introduction about what we do. Uh, we are, we are running a two, we're running two sessions now, uh, on, online, uh, uh, online, online uh, workshops. Uh, we call it Assessing the Hidden Job Markets via LinkedIn and Networking. So how do you use LinkedIn? How do you use networking to, to look for roles? Okay, how do you leverage? So to, to the question earlier that was asked about LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. Uh, it can be a solution to a lot of your problems. It could also be the source of a lot of your problems as well. Because if you're not doing it right, you're going to be, it's going to injure you, okay? So uh, we have a two-hour live online workshop uh, there. Uh, we can, we'll send you details about it later. And in the event that uh, you do have an interview lined up, or if you want to know how to prep for interviews, as or as what we said earlier, every meeting is an interview. Uh, we have the interview masterclass, uh, Land a Job That You Want. It's also a two-hour live uh, online, online workshop, okay, with Yen and myself. We'll be running these uh, in, in, in relatively small groups so that you get more attention. But uh, these are things that we said earlier, you know, if, if you are not getting traction on your own, uh, maybe you might just want to consider investing time, time into this as well. But um, the time now is, uh, how are we going for time? 9.10. So, uh, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to, to email us, WhatsApp us. And um, any, any last words, Yen? Thanks everyone for taking the time to join us this morning. Uh, the, the main intention hasn't been necessarily to plug our workshops. Uh, we do have uh, a genuine interest in making sure that we can help everyone. Or, um, so so I, I'm not insisting that you sign up. Okay, guys? Okay, I could, so what can I say, Adrian? I just want to work less. It's a circuit breaker period. I don't want to work so hard. You know how many Zoom calls I've had? <laughs> okay. so maybe let me interject there. Okay, yeah. so for, for some of us who, who really need help, I sent the contact info in the chat box. So contact us at info at careeragility.org or you can just contact us on our Facebook or Messenger. We're quite active. <laughs>